Holy crap, guys. What a day. What a day. So I just came outside to get my initial thoughts on the Talon filmed. Uh, right before I came outside, Trump announced that nobody's coming into, into the country. Uh, a couple other things are going on with that. The NBA suspended their season. Tom Hanks has freaking coronavirus. I don't have any toilet paper. I honestly don't know what I'm going to do to wipe my butt uh, if uh, things get out of hand. Probably uh, like they did in the olden days, I imagine, but that's not why we're here. So with that said, as you can tell, this video is going to be a little bit unscripted. I want to give you my initial thoughts of the Talon, what I think of it after about 100, 120 miles on it, um, after having done uh, most of the initial service um, and getting some good seat time in it. So in today's video, I'm going to run through that. Hopefully you'll find some of that information useful. So let's get after it. Initial impressions is uh, I'm excited. I think I got the right machine for me. You think we got the right machine, babe? Oh yeah, this is I. It's super smooth. We're gonna turn around here. Oh, I can uh, see myself. Super smooth. Really enjoy the comfort of the ride. Uh, it's uh, I don't know. It shifts really well. Um, I feel like it. Uh, I don't know. I like the i four wheel drive. We haven't got to use it a ton yet. Sketchy stuff in this wash here. Uh, Bubba, what do you think about it? I like it. You like it? Yeah. Can you see more from the back, Ivy, where you're sitting? Kind of. Do you see better back there than you did in our other one? Kind of. Yeah? That's good. Are the seats more comfortable? Yeah. That's awesome. What do you like about it? It feels faster. Feels faster? Yeah, it feels faster for sure. Does it feel smoother? Feel smoother, faster, smoother. I mean, just an all-around good time. I'm gonna try this way, see what happens. It is. I um, I woke up this morning with a bad back, and somehow today I've been just fine. These seats are super comfortable in the Talon. Like this. Is oh, jeez. Um, we just picked it up from the shop a few days ago, so it's. Yeah, this is ride one. So. Yeah. So far, loving it. Just having a blast. Yep. Definitely All right, so those are some of my impressions after the first ride, some of mine, some of my wife's, and even some of my kids. So now that we've talked about kind of first impressions, I wanna go over, and before I get to what I love about this machine, I wanna go over a few things that are kind of uh, dislikes or things that I'm not a huge fan of. The first thing I just experienced last night, and that is the first maintenance for this machine. So the first maintenance for this machine is pretty extensive if you ask me uh it is uh well shoot let me pull out the uh the manual here and look at it okay so this is what's required for the first maintenance on your honda talon this is after 100 miles or uh 20 hours whichever comes first mine was definitely 100 miles so first thing check the side net and mounting hardware blah 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 you know what? i'm gonna skip that kind of stuff and go on to the stuff that actually has to be done not the checks but the dues um, let's see here, replace engine oil and filter, uh, check sub transmission oil, replace sub transmission oil is every two years regardless of mileage, so I don't have to worry about that, um, replace DCT oil filter, um, inspect valve clearance, that one is a huge pain in the butt and if I'm being straight with you, I think if there are issues with valve clearance after 100 miles, that is something Honda should take care of, not, uh, not the owner. You don't have uh, that type of maintenance on other machines, at least I've heard of. If there are other machines that require that type of maintenance um, in the first 100 miles, then leave them in the comments below. I've never heard of them. Share them with us. I'd love to hear about it. But to me, it seems crazy to have to uh, tear apart your machine and check your valves and check valve clearances after, uh, after 100 miles. There is a note though to keep in mind is you're, you are to um, 
inspect valve clearance as needed if engine is noisy. So if the engine sounds a little noisy, if there's some clicking going along around from the valves not having the proper clearance, that's when you check your valves. To, uh, like I said, to me, if there's issues with valve clearance that early in the uh, engine life, that's an assembly problem or, or something else. To me, I just feel like that should be handled by Honda. That's my opinion. I'll leave it at that. Um, let's see here. Replace front and rear final gear oil. So you got to do your front and rear final gear oil. Um, and then check shift lever adjustment. That's just another check. So what needs to be done on your first maintenance for these machines is front and rear diff, replace your oil filter and oil, replace your DCT filter uh, and oil, which is the same thing. Um, change your air filter. Um, I think that's it. Did I miss it? Oh, and inspect the valves. And like I said, to me, inspecting the valves is a little crazy. So not a huge fan of what's required as far as maintenance, especially in the first hundred miles. Um, after that, it gets into a normal cycle. I think it's about every 600 miles, though, rather than uh, every 1,000 miles, which sometimes you see with other, uh, other manufacturers. But like I said, really the initial maintenance for me is, is I feel it's a bit of a, bit of a uh, intense um, initial maintenance that early in the, uh, in the cycle life. With that, so I decided with this to, to do my own maintenance or the maintenance on the machine myself. With the exception of the valves, I will have those checked by a dealer rather than me doing them myself, um, more than likely. Uh, but so far, just as of last night, I did the uh, front and uh, rear uh, final gear, and I did the oil and DCT. And I got to tell you, it's the first time I've done it on a Honda, uh, and I made a mess. Definitely going to get a pan to go underneath it for next time, because I made a mess of the oil. Um, forgot to put on a spring when I reassembled it, rolled it away, saw that I left the spring, luckily caught it, put it back in. Uh, it was just a messy comedy of errors last night. Heck, when I was putting a stinking uh, diff uh, plug back in in the back, um, put it in, it dropped into my oil catch pan, which has little small holes so you don't let your uh, oil plug go through. Um, fell right through one of the holes. So I had to dig my diff plug out of about seven quarts of nasty, probably three-year-old oil. So that was a good time. Um, but yeah, overall, it was just, next time I'll do a lot of things <laughs> differently to make sure it wasn't such a mess. But, but hey, next kind of dislike or something I don't like a ton on the machine is the lack of storage. Um, there's not a ton of storage on it. You got the glove box and that's about it. So the cubbies, just like most uh, side-by-sides that are coming out nowadays, the cubbies in the dash are pretty useless. Uh, it has a big cubby up top uh, with no shelf or anything else on it. Fairly useless. Give it enough gas or whatever, you're going to have stuff falling out. Same with the lower console. It's too small to fit a lot of things or lower uh, cubby in the console anyway. Too small to fit a lot of things. It's pretty annoying as well. Would be nice if there was a little more storage for sure. Uh, another thing that I don't really like, and uh, this is getting more and more common with machines, I know Dave had the same issue with his Can-Am, is there is very little space to put switches or panels for accessories. So if you wanna add four or five accessories on your machine, have a different switch for each one, you're gonna have a hard time with this finding the right um, deal without taking away any storage uh, space that you have. So if you want six switches, you got to put it in the top cubby and you got a good plate for it and you know you're going to take up a bunch of space so there's not a ton of real easy usable space like you find on a on a polaris um to add switches or garrett's krx garrett's krx i think comes with seven or eight cutouts already ready for you to um to put uh stuff on so uh would be nice if there was a better uh easier way to add accessories onto this machine uh, I did find a cool switch panel that I'll probably be going with and I'll do a video on it in the future uh, from Dragonfire. Uh, I'll leave a link to it somewhere um, in the description so you can see that. The last thing is a lack of a tailgate. Everybody is not putting a tailgate on their machine anymore. Can-Am doesn't have one. I don't think Polaris has one. Um, the Talon doesn't have one. Uh, it would be nice if there's some sort of tailgate in the back. Just keep crap, keep crap from sliding out the back if your uh, straps let loose. So. That's it, so that's it for the dislikes. Let's get to what I like about the machine. Okay, so the biggest like that I have for this machine is the confidence that it brings, the confidence that I have in it. And that comes from the quality of the machine. When I sat in this machine for the first time, I really felt like it was really well put together, uh, great quality of machine, great fit and finish, everything else. Uh, I really thought that it was really well done. 
Uh, but before I purchased it, obviously I still had my razor, jumped back in it, drove around everything else. I really um, could tell the difference in quality when I sat back in my razor. I don't wanna to get too crazy, my razor was three years old, but um, I really felt the difference in quality with this machine. It really felt, um, it, it, what that quality brought was a lot of confidence in the, in the driving, in the trip, in the whether or not it was gonna to hold, to, hold together and everything else. So I really love the feel of the machine uh, and the confidence that it brought. Next is the ride. So I have the live model version. So the ride for me is awesome. So uh, whether I'm going through tight stuff um, and needed to be tight in the corners or whether I'm just wanted to be normal and soft and um, kind of comfortable ride for the family going through slow, uh, creepy stuff or whatever, really felt like it was soft when it needed to be and tightened up or stiffened up when I uh, needed to be tight or stiff. So. Um, you know, hitting G outs or anything like that. It really, I, I really feel like the suspension on this thing does do a great job. Uh, with, I guess, the caveat um, that it would be nice if it had some more uh, travel. So it would be nice if this thing had 20 inches of travel. Um, if there was an R version of this that had greater travel, it would definitely float through the whoops better than it does. Um, it does do pretty well in the whoops, and the live valve suspension definitely helps with it. Uh, but I wouldn't call this a floater. Uh, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't be doing 60 or 70 through the whoops yet but uh, but it does do really well and I really do feel like it does have a very comfortable ride that's definitely one of the things that I like about the machine next is the DCT so on my initial ride with the family I kind of gave some of my initial thoughts and opinions on the DCT and my thoughts and opinions are the same now so I got to talk about the uh, transmission real quick so I've heard some people say that uh, they feel like it's confused sometimes or maybe doesn't get the right gear the right times or whatever i haven't noticed that yet i gotta i gotta say i feel like it's right where it needs to be every time i haven't been using the uh, sport mode at all uh, or the manual transmission at all anyway um, i've had it in automatic the whole time and uh, like i said i feel like it gets the right gear puts me in the right spot uh, every time I haven't had any issues with that, when it shifts, it's smooth, and you hear it. Uh, the sound of the ship is uh, more abrupt than the actual feel of the ship. So, anyway, that's my quick thoughts. So, first impressions on the transmission. So, overall, I love the transmission. I feel like there's smooth power delivery. I like the ability to shift down when I need to or want to. And I feel like, honestly, when I have it in automatic mode, it figures out what gear I want nine and a half times out of ten. Uh, I don't feel like it's searching for gears like uh, you may have heard somebody else say. Uh, to me, I feel like it's where it needs to be when it needs to be there. Uh, that's been my experience so far. I'm 100 and 120 miles in so far, so that may change down the road and I uh, reserve the right to, to change if it does. But so far, I mean, honestly, it's been, it's been great. The transmission has been where it needs to be, when it needs to be there. Uh, I really feel like it gets the power to the ground really well. Um, and I have, uh, have loved that piece of the machine. And then the last like that I have for it, 120 miles in, are the tires. So I, uh, as you may have seen in a different video, I upgraded to 32 inch tires, uh, Tusk Terabytes as a matter of fact, uh, put them all in all four corners and just left them on the stock wheels. Uh, I love these tires. I love the ground clearance that it gives me on the machine. Uh, and I love the, the confidence that I have when I'm doing uh, the slow creepy stuff and going through obstacles and stuff like that, that I'm gonna have the clearance that I need. And I just love the tires in general. I feel like they hook up well when they need to, and they really bring confidence as well. So I highly recommend the Tusk Terabytes. Um, great tires, uh, and looking forward to putting some more miles on them for sure. So overall, I have to say, like I said, 100 miles in. This is kind of a 100-mile review, 120-mile review. I love the machine, man. I could not be happier with it. I really enjoy it. Every time I come out into the garage, I look at it and wish I was riding it, uh, and I try to get out on it as much as I can. Um, really looking forward to, uh, to getting it out on the next ride. Uh, probably be Montana Mountain Loop. We'll see. I was going to bring it up to Utah this week, but it uh, looks like that's not going to happen. So um, really looking forward to riding it again. Love the machine. Overall, I am super happy with it. If you guys have any questions or comments or thoughts or whatever on uh, what you think about the machine or on my opinions on the machine, then leave them in the comments below. Let's have a, a, a discussion there. Uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again. We love having a discussion with you guys there. We usually reply to every comment or close to every comment. Uh, we get to just about every one that we can because uh, we do enjoy that discussion uh, in the comments below. 
Uh, also, one more thing before you go, if you'd like to support us, we would love your support. Um, we appreciate your support so far. Heck, you're watching this video, so you're supporting us and we appreciate that. A couple ways that you can help us, click the like button. It definitely helps. What that does is helps YouTube know that uh, people are watching our video and then it'll start to recommend our video to other people. So it definitely helps out there. Um, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Uh, we definitely would appreciate that. You can also check us out on Patreon. We are running Patreon as well. Have pretty limited support there right now and we really would love more. It's uh, kind of up to you guys whether or not you want it. We do pr provide some benefits there. Uh, we provide some mapping GPX files to different locations in the Southwest, uh, stickers, and then uh, early access to some stuff as well. And eventually we'll get to the point where we add additional benefits to that as well. So if you'd like to support us on Patreon, check out the link below. Also wanna thank our current Patreon supporter, uh, DuneYXZ, a uh, great dude from here in Arizona. Uh, has a great YouTube channel as well. Um, a lot of YXZ content on there, so check it out. One last way you can support us is checking out our website at derangedoffroad.com. We sell parts, accessories, um, all kinds of stuff on our website. So if you're looking for some whips or some high quality lights from Rhino um, or some apparel, we have a link to that in the description below. Guys, I can't thank you enough for watching. Ride safe, pack out what you pack in, and we'll see you on the next one. I used to think